This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Covered in Pet Hair, a boozy show for pet lovers on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with the founder of Cat School. I'll tell you all about her and introduce you as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a pet parent, a cat trainer, a former dog trainer. She's an entrepreneur, a road tripper, and a foodie. She loves her coffee and loves her tea. She was born in Toronto, currently lives in Vancouver. She's wife to Brian, who's also her tech guy. She is dogma to Delilah and catma to Jones. She's a huge fan of clicker training and a harness she created herself to take cats on walks. She is the founder of Cat School, and her name is Julie Poslins. Welcome, Julie. Did I pronounce that properly? I did. Oh, my (laughs) goodness. That's great news. Welcome, Julie. It's so nice to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you. I love the concept of cat school and we're going to get into that. But first, I want to introduce our drinking game. Anybody participating in our drinking game today? Anytime you hear this word. The secret word is kindergarten. Make sure you take a drink of whatever you're enjoying and please make sure you're over 21 in the U.S. Never drink and drive and always drink responsibly. So what are you having today, Julie? Nothing exciting. Just a green tea. (laughs) Well, you know what? It's that time of year where it's cold. I'm sure. How cold is it in Vancouver right now? Actually, today is a beautiful day. So, yeah. What does beautiful really... mean to you? Well, okay, I'm from yeah. Miami. We're, I'm from Toronto. Okay, so Toronto, it's been really cold. So I've been kind of comparing because um, that's where I normally spend time. But uh, it's like seven degrees uh, here. So seven degrees. So, yeah, I know it's not that warm, but... <laughs> <laughs> for seven us, degrees the Celsius, Celsius is, how, yeah. is, is what? So you do seven times two and add 30. Uh, I think that's kind of how seven it goes. Times two, so it's 40 so it's like something 40, yeah, in the 40s. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's I think not that's too bad. Right. That's yeah. not too bad. And the sun, I... sun's out, which is a rare thing here, apparently. So this yeah. time of year. Yes, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Well, I'm from Miami. I live in El Paso where it's always gorgeous. Blue skies never very, oh, wow. very rarely do we get gray rain or snow. Um, but I'm actually under the weather. So I I'm staying inside. I have no idea like what the temperature is outside. But I think we've been hovering around like 45 degrees. And today I'm actually having a London fog because I'm sick. But a London fog actually tastes like a treat. It's uh, Earl Grey, some cream or milk. I think we have vegan half and half in here and some vanilla and honey. So it's delicious. Cheers to you. Thank you for being on the show. Um, And here's to warmer weather ahead. I definitely need that that warm tea right now. So forgive my voice, guys. But it's not going to cramp my style at all because I'm ready to play this game with you. This first game, I always introduce the show with a game. It's called Cat School after your creation, which is not a physical location cat school. It's an online cat school. But I want you to use your imagination. Okay, Julie, I want you to pretend that the concept that we've created for children, that we open that up to cats and we send cats to school. Are you ready to play cat school? I am very ready. (laughs) Okay, let's see. (laughs) All right, so 
Imagine these scenarios that children experience every single day. And we'll say like preschool kindergartners here for this, for the purpose of this show. And imagine what a cat would do if presented with the same scenario, okay? The first one is drop off, where the children are expected to walk to their classrooms on their own from the carpool lane. What would a cat do? The cat would probably not get out of the car. <laughs> so the, the walk wouldn't even happen or they would walk away from the school. They definitely wouldn't be walking to the school. So that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. I love that answer. They're not even getting out of the car. All right. Next one. Morning circle. My, my kids go to a Montessori school and in morning circle, they like sing songs about like the day. Like, we're so happy you're here. They go over like the day of the week or whatever, the, the, the month, all that. How would cats react to a morning circle once we force them in the building? I don't think there would be a circle. <laughs> so there would be no circle. <laughs> so I could vision everyone sort of all, all of the students separated and someone trying to get them in a circle and then giving up. So that, that's what I think would happen. <laughs> yes, it brings to mind that phrase of herding kittens. I feel like that's exactly what we would be seeing there. No one would be in a circle. <laughs> I would not want to be the teacher at this school with the cats no. in there. I will say that for sure. All right, snack time. Each child brings their own snack to consume at a designated time. How would that go down with cats? Okay, so I don't think everyone would eat their own snack. That's for sure. They would be investigating who has the best snack, who's got the temptations. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So whoever comes with the best, yeah. Yes. And doing some trading. Training? I don't know. Tra if no, trading. 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 Oh, trading. trading. Tr stealing. Yeah. stealing. Stealing more like it. Mm, <laughs> okay. Okay. How about playtime? I think I, I think this is the, probably the only part of the class schedule that they would embrace. Playtime. Outdoors. Would they even come back after that? I don't think they would come back. No. <laughs> <laughs> and playtime, I don't even know what that would look like because I think they would all just separate and do their own thing. And, you know, I don't know if I don't envision wrestling like at a dog park kind of thing. <laughs> right. Or like playing like princess. Like I think my son yeah. and his friends do at school. Like the, one of the girls is like in charge and she's like making them all play princess with her. <laughs> I don't think that would happen. <laughs> Definitely not. I think everyone would go off into their own activity or their own, yeah, their own zone, their own activity. And that would be that. <laughs> Wait, there might be some bullying. I would say that there might be some bullying in the schoolyard. <laughs> I do feel like that's definitely across all mammalian species. There might be a little bit of bullying at this It'll age. Be bullying. Hopefully, hopefully they'd outgrow it. All right, lunchtime. So the children bring their own meals from home. And imagine that one cat had like a turkey sandwich and the other one had a tuna sandwich. Would they eat each eat their own sandwich or how would that go down? No, <laughs> they would not be eating their own sandwich for sure. Like they would definitely be marching over to someone else's sandwich and seeing what they have. I think that that would happen. Yeah. What do you think would be the most popular lunch item? Hmm. Yeah, like I don't probably the chicken, maybe the I, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know what would be Ooh. the pop, most popular meat. <laughs> oh, the meat. Pop, most popular meat, but it would have to be some kind of a <laughs> carnivorous meal for sure. How about yeah. nap time? Would they all grab a blanket and go to a designated spot when they were told to? Nap time could actually work. <laughs> It might be the only time of day that after all their activities, the bullying, the stealing, nap time might actually work. They'd probably find the sunniest spot and yeah, fight for the sunniest spot along the ledge of the, the windows in the in the classroom. I could see Love that. Love that. Yes, I, I agree. And then, okay, so now it's the end of the day, school release. How are these cats feeling about their day? I think they're feeling tired and happy because they probably actually like, even though they you know, probably not shared that they were happy to be there. They appreciated the activity and enrichment. That's what I always say. They really do. They might like not want to get into it, but at the end of the day, they appreciate it. They're reluctant participants, but then they take a good nap and they're like, that wasn't exactly. so bad. That wasn't so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Exactly oh. That's awesome. Okay. So now I have a visual of what cat school would look like. And I want to know, like, how long have you been running your cat school? Uh, so cat school started in 2017. So four or five years ish. And yeah, it basically started with me offering a first, my first course, which was teacher cat, uh, a paw shake. That was like my, my teacher. It was a fist bump, high five, low five, and put it all together into a really cute, unique paw shake. That was the first thing I ever tried. 
So, yeah. And people responded to that. Was that a local thing or just online or how did that It was work? online. It was kind of like the first thing that I came up with. Um, and people did respond. It like, it didn't end up being what I was going to keep reiterating. And, you know, I kind of had to go from there and figure out like, what would people be interested in? Uh, but I did get, you know, you know, a bunch of signups and we had fun training our paw shakes and kind of started with that. That is so cool. So do you do trick training as well as like behavior modification in cat school? Yeah. So trick training, um, practical behaviors, solving problem behaviors. So, and leash walking, those are kind of the big areas that we cover. That is so cool. I love the leash walking. That is so important. I think that when people can't have catios, this is a really good option because yeah, I think yeah. everybody thinks I have to have a catio. You don't. There are other options for sure. How about you told me you were running a pet care business prior to cat school or did you do it alongside cat school? How did that no. transition happen? So, yeah, so I had a dog walking business for many, 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 many years. And uh, then I went back to get my master's in animal behavior and I kind of had my business running, you know, while I was away, I went across Canada to do my master's and my business kept running. And so once I kind of realized that I, when I came back, I was like, okay, what now am I going to go back to dog walking? But anyway, I ended up having to write my thesis. So I couldn't really work at that time. And so again, it was kind of like, I'm not dog walking anymore. What am I doing? And then I, when I finally finished my thesis, I, I kind of was like ready for something else. And I was looking around and there was really two things that I was interested in. And one was cat school. <laughs> and I didn't think that I could really get it off the ground, but I was, I guess I was just motivated to try and started to get a bit of momentum going. That is awesome. Yeah. I mean, you're doing great with that. You have a great online social media uh, presence and following. Um, good for you. I mean, that the, you. did, did the dog walking business prepare you for this? Obviously. I, I oh yeah. Say. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I think dog walking, like it's just the most amazing business and I learned so much and I learned so much about like working with people too, you know, how to help them. Um, I'm, I really believe in how dog walkers can get involved in training too, because I think the owners get to know you versus them hiring a stranger. So I always kind of got to know the owners and also help them with training. And I do look at that from my lens, like in that lens and try to apply it to cats as well. And I think that, you know, maybe one day if I ever offer more services to training people, it would be in that way too, more of like a cat sitter who's going to have more skills because I think there's a real opportunity there to people are accepting they are willing you know to hire cat sitters and stuff and i think once they get to know them that's a good opportunity for people to say hey i can also help you clip your cat's nails teach you how to get your cat in a carrier so i always see things through a dog walking lens but right now i don't have anything like that you know it's going on i don't have a trainer program yet or anything but yeah it's always in my head i'm like huh how could we help cats and how do we do this with dogs and how do we apply that and so I, I think it's very, very useful to look at what's been done with dogs and what works and what helps them and then kind of apply it to the cat world because it's so new, the cat training exactly. world. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's such an untapped market still. People yeah. don't realize. I mean, I think people in the dog world are still realizing that dog training is attainable, that there are dog trainers in their areas because a lot of people don't even yeah. think about a dog trainer until something terrible happens and then maybe their veterinarian recommends somebody. And cats even more so. People are like, cat training? What does that even mean? So actually, yeah. that brings me to my next question. Who's easier to train, dogs or cats? <laughs> I think cats are pretty easy to train, but there's a lot of layers that you have to, I think it's just the way that we feed cats and the way that we think of them is different. But if you actually raise your cat like a dog, for example, I'll just give you, you know, it's very common to leave your cat's food out all day, but you wouldn't right. do that with a dog. Well, obviously that affects their trainability. So how could you really say cats aren't as trainable when their food, the reward that you use for dog training is sitting in front of them, right? So I actually think they're equally trainable for the most part, but the way that we raise them and the food and all those other kind of variables affect their trainability and make it harder for people to kind of get there. I agree with that completely. That makes perfect sense. I mean, if they're not hungry, they're not motivated. If, if they're food motivated, but they're not hungry, then they're not motivated. Yeah. So it's really hard to do training. And then, you know, people are so used to giving dogs a variety of treats, but with cats, 
they didn't introduce them. They, maybe they only fed them one thing their whole life. And then they're like, well, my cat doesn't like any treats. It's like, okay. Well, so instead of actually doing training, I'm doing food stuff with people. Right. Which, You're doing you know, like, uh, what is it? Like taste tests? Like, <laughs> it's more like, can we get you to put your cat's food away? Can we oh. give your cat, introduce your cat to new food? You know, is it that your cat is scared of trying the new food or is it a preference? Like I'm trying and, you know, stuck in this zone, right? So like, going spur circling back it's like what i was saying is like you know i think they're equally trainable but we've got all these issues we have to first kind of overcome yes 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 totally i totally agree with that and i actually am in the second game i'm going to share with you a couple of things that a pet parent shared with me where she said about her dog the dog was too stubborn and i had I wasn't going to, you know, I'm not a dog trainer, so I wasn't going to dig into that. But I was like, so why was the dog not motivated? Why is the dog so stubborn? What could you do to make it so that the dog is will a willing participant in this training? So we are going to talk more about that. But I need to take a break, listen to our sponsors, and we'll be right back to talk more about cat school, online training, and clicker training. Don't go anywhere. Molly, here's your dinner. Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Rada, and today I'm speaking to Julie from Cat School, who I was introduced to by the two crazy cat ladies, who are my favorite two crazy cat ladies. If you haven't followed Julie, Cat School, or the two crazy cat ladies, make sure you do. They're awesome. And if you have a cat, you need to be following both of these awesome accounts. So now I want to play a game with Julie about online training because Julie's cat school is fully online. And a lot of pet parents have a hard time wrapping their heads around how you do online training with your pets because they're thinking they have to lug their pet down the street to the Petco, Pet, PetSmart, whatever facility is physically there. And that actually limits a lot of people to who they can actually train with. So Julie, are you ready to play online training, yay or nay? Yes, I am. All right. So here are some thoughts, misconceptions, beliefs that I heard from my followers and my audience regarding online training for cats and dogs. I want you to give me your thoughts on this, whether it's right, wrong, indifferent. Let me know what you think about these, I guess, hesitations that people run into when considering online training. The first one is... It's less convenient than an in-person class because you have to remember to like log on and do other things outside of the face-to-face class. Well, I'm going to say no, it's not because at least with my program, it's not at a specific time. (laughs) So you can log on whenever you, you know, have any time. It's not like you have to uh, go on at a specific time or anything like that. Uh, But and being able to go on whenever you have time or whenever you feel like it to me would be a big convenience so not having to go to a specific class you know that to me that would be more inconvenient if for instance you're more tired or you've had a busy day or whatever so I think online more convenient (laughs) I would agree with that, especially like around winter when there's weather and cancellations and like all that. And you're like, yeah, my kid, my, my kitten or my puppy still needs manner training, right? They still need to do something, but I haven't been able to take my kid down or my child or my, I'm sorry, my cat or my dog (laughs) down the street to training because of the weather. So yeah, I agree with you. And then is it self-paced? Yeah. 
so it's it. This they can work on it whenever they want. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, like you know, sometimes the week gets crazy and you don't have time to fit something in, so you resume the next week. It would that be like yeah. a huge deal breaker? No, I think it's great. People can work on it whenever they have time or when their cat is up. You know, for me, it's a little different with you know because their cat's sleeping. They're gonna wake them up, take them to a class. <laughs> so this is this is definitely better for cats for sure. I would agree with that. It's hard to find cat training, especially group cat training. It, like, yeah, yeah, I know it exists. It's called kitty kindergarten. Yeah, I know it exists, but I don't think it's everywhere. One and two, I don't know how convenient. I mean, I think that it's is. a great thing, and I, I would hope that it grows too, because, like, I, I think it's a good thing. But I, I think both are great. You know, like whatever training we promote for animals, it's great. So if someone wants to get out of the house and bring their cat somewhere, by all means. But I think there's also going to be a lot of people who are happy to stay at home and you know do it from home. And if you're taking them somewhere, maybe they need to learn how to put them on a harness first. Yeah, the harness, the carrier, the car for cats—that's a lot, you know. Yes. It, it like it. I mean, I think kitten kindergarten is really good because it would force people—not force people, but encourage people to do that early on, which would yes. make a huge difference in their cat's life. So, a kitten kindergarten, like I do think those should be, become more popular. But I think we have a long ways to go before they're offered in every vet clinic. The goal would be the vet clinics because Ooh. it's like making the vet clinic a positive place to be where they, you know, have already had a good association with it and they get exposed to the equipment and the scales and, you know, whatever you need to do there. So it'd be such a win. But uh, I think we are still a ways away from people offering that service. Ooh, I love that idea of setting it in the veterinary clinic. That makes perfect sense. Is it more work for the pet parent than an in-person class? Because they imagine they're the ones kind of leading the training if it's online? I think it would be the same because when you go to a class, you're you're working with your pet, you're watching the instructor, but the instructor can't spend that much time with you. So, you know, I think it's probably, I would say it's probably the same. And the goal is to train the people you know, like I would not encourage someone to do board and train with their dog or cat um, where you send your animal off. So similarly, you have to be the handler in any case. So whether right. it's online or at the school, you got to learn. <laughs> I love it. It's true. We're not really training the cats and the dogs, people. We're training you. We're training ourselves exactly. for sure. So how about the people who say my pet didn't do well in an in-person class? I They just didn't respond to it? What, what would you say to them about online training? Well, online would be better because there's less distractions. Mm -hmm. I always say like, teach the behaviors in a low distracting environment first. I remember working with some dog people, I went to their house, I did one lesson with them. And I gave them a book that encouraged them to read a, a book on clicker training. And then they went to the class and they were like, Oh, it was so easy. You know, it was like, we didn't learn that much. And I was kind of laughing because you know, the opposite is they don't do that first. They don't do it in the house and they go to the class. The dog is all distracted. It's, you know, it's never learned this. It's so much better to do the hard work first in a quiet space. And then, you know, then you go and you add the distractions. Exactly. Yes. They need to be able to master the yeah. skill. Master it at home. At Learn home. Sit. Then, yes. Yeah. Attention, Absolutely. figure out what treats, motivate them, do all that first. Yes. Then you can start to add distractions in. Yeah. And it's a more, it's a safer environment. You have their attention. If something, you know, if they, if they wander off, it's not as dangerous <laughs> yeah. as if they wander off at the vet clinic. All right. Let's see. How about for those people who say that my pet's too stubborn to do any kind of training? Well, that's definitely, I get people saying that to me all the time. You know, that's frustrating, obviously, from a trainer's perspective, because you're just like, of course, that every animal can learn. We know that. So it's obviously something that you're doing wrong, but we don't want to say that because that's, you know, <laughs> not the right way to approach this, but we try to figure it out and, you know, how usually it's food with cats. So you know, it's not stubborn. When people say my cat's too lazy, they don't usually with they say my cat's lazy. That's what I usually get. And obviously, that's, you know, not something I like hearing, because I don't believe any cat is lazy. But cats also get used to not getting attention. So when you start doing something new with them, they're very suspicious. And they're like, what do you what are we doing here? You know, do I really want to participate in this thing that we're doing? And of course, at first, they're going to be not that interested until they see what's in it for them. 
Yes. There is a saying that says that like, basically any mammal will do anything, but there has to be a payoff. Like what's in it yeah. for them, right? Like, yeah, what's if the you're paycheck? thinking of training even your kid to do things just because you said so, it's yeah. going to be a long road. <laughs> what's in it for them, right? Just because you tell them isn't a good enough reason. <laughs> exactly. And that has been a hard road for me as a parent. I will tell you that for sure. Yeah. Because my dogs always, I always use, you know, treats and reinforcement. And when I, um, I, I fostered uh, neonatal kittens, they were so little and eager to please. And honestly, they didn't really get into anything because they're little and exploring and they're so cute that it doesn't matter what they do because they're so cute. But then here's my four-year-old test, like <laughs> pushing my buttons and I'm like, just do it. And then I'm like, well, why is he different than all the other animals that I have taken care of? Yeah. He needs yeah. motivation. Yes. And sometimes I think us as pet parents, we can be really stubborn too. We're like, no, I'm not using treats because I want him to do it because I asked. It's like, yeah, exactly. That's like no one, no human. That's I always think, well, would you go to work if you didn't get a paycheck? I mean, no, of course not. We ding, all ding, work ding. for a paycheck. Yeah, exactly. Like, even similar, like one of the best analogies is playing a slot machine. Like you sit down to play a slot machine. If you don't win three times, you're like, this slot machine sucks. I'm moving on to another one, right? You're like, this machine's broken. <laughs> like you got to sit, you got to win at first, especially, oh, this is a good machine. I'm going to sit here. And then they, re you know, you get used to, you're like, you might win four times and then you're like okay i won i won four times i'll sit here because i trust this machine is a good one you know i'm, I'm winning yes yes so that makes I, perfect yeah. sense yeah you gotta win they gotta win really early on to show them it's a fun game i agree with that completely i think that for humans and and, and yeah. companion animals alike it is very true how about personally, the pet parent just doesn't have the motivation. They're scared that they're going to take on this online training and then not follow through with it. What would you say to them? I mean, I think that's a real, I think time is a real, that's probably the biggest one that, you know, we can't just say, oh, you know, whatever, like we right. can figure this out. That's a hard one because people are so busy. I think that I always try to say, you know, just spend with cats anyway, two to three minutes, and then they get excited. And then they spend, you know, it's like anything that we do, you start working out, you're like, I'll do 10 minutes. And then you're like, okay, I'll still do this. Maybe I'll do one push up fine. <laughs> you know? yes. you got to just get going. So I don't tell people they have to do very long sessions. I always say like, you know, just do three minutes, just feed like five treats. That's it. And then hopefully they see their cat learning and the motivation happens. Cause I'm like that too. I mean, I recognize it with myself as well. Sometimes, you know, it's 9 30 at night, my cat's hyper. I'm like, what am I doing with you? I don't want to train you now. You know, <laughs> yes. we're all the same. We all are tired and overworked <laughs> Exactly. too exactly. much on our plate. And it's hard. Exactly. So, and maybe they have a motivation where it comes to like, okay, so you don't have time for, you know, a whole training program, but maybe they have some kind of behavior to modify, you know, a, a situation that's arising in their home that they need to address. Then maybe they can just focus on that instead of like a huge training yeah. protocol. Yeah. I don't think that anyone, well, I mean, it's like, I like to think of it like a puzzle, you know, just go walk, like walk over to the puzzle and do a couple pieces. That's it. <laughs> We don't have to sit down and do the whole puzzle today. You know, here's a piece that will help improve the behavior this way and that another piece here and just kind of go from there. The one thing I would say about pets, though, that can be quite good is once they enjoy the activity, they'll start to ask for it. And yes. then you feel like you need to, you know, kind of like walking a dog. If you walk them every day at 11, they'll start stirring at that time. So mm -hmm. if we do encourage people to train at the same time, the cats will start showing up and saying, hey, it's training time. If your cat shows up, it's really hard to be like, no, you know, I don't want to do this with you. We'll do, you know, you just have to do two minutes and that's kind of it. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, our pets have a short attention span anyway. It's not like that much time every yeah. single time they'll appreciate the three to five minutes that you spend with them like they really will and they might a cat especially might not want to do much more than you know five to ten repetitions of whatever you're doing so yeah I love that. I love that it's, especially with cats, I feel like you can do, you don't really even have to get sure. off the couch. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> yeah. like it can, it's really quite portable, this training. What would you say to people who say that online training for their pets is too costly? I don't know how it compares to in person training, but just in general, what would you say when somebody says it's just too much money? Well, I, I mean, I was always under the impression that virtual was cheaper. I always, 
get more focused on comparing dog training prices to cat training prices. And I know you cannot charge the same for that. <laughs> true, so true. I think, you know, <laughs> virtual is definitely cheaper. So people would be paying less, but whether or not people have a budget for training or not, it's hard with cats and because people aren't used to paying for training with cats. So I think with dogs, but this could be based on where people live, but I think like in Toronto, it is very acceptable to, to have to do one or two sessions or not even sessions, but like sign up for one or two classes. Like dog classes in Toronto are so busy, so busy. Cat training is a different ball game. So I think people are not, you know, they didn't budget for it. They're not like, oh, I, I needed to put aside this for cat training. <laughs> right. They're used to buying toys. People know they have to pay for toys, but cat training, no. So I think it's, it's a very, you know, it's people will find it expensive no matter what it is, because we're not conditioned to say your cat needs to go to school. Right. So, right. Well, you heard it here. Your cat needs to go to school. So <laughs> if you, if you're getting a cat <laughs> budget for classes, because just yeah. like a dog, your cat will benefit from either kitty kindergarten exactly. or online training or one-on-one -on -one training yes. with a cat trainer in your area. Start budgeting exactly. for it, people, because it's necessary. <laughs> Cats yeah, are not exactly. just like wooden sculptures on our walls. That, you know what I mean? Like they yeah. have, they need engagement. They need enrichment. They need all of those things. And in order yeah. to have a positive relationship with their person, they sometimes need behavior modification so everybody can live happily ever after. So- what would you say to somebody who has no idea what online cat and dog training is? Like, how do you explain it to them? Yeah, that's, that's tough because I, I get it. It's like, you're, you're like, how, how does this even work? It's like for us, it's, you know, it's easier than someone who's trying to say you have to join in right now. And there's going to be other students on a zoom. Cause that's not what we do for, for me. It's just, you know, log on, watch the video, do the training. If you're having problems, post a question. If you want me to review it, post a video. So that's kind of what it looks like on our end, which is nice because it's very, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. You can like join the class and not ever have any interaction with your teacher or me, or you can have lots of interaction. You can post questions. I can watch your videos. So it really just, but the one stumbling block from, I find in our class is people really seem to think that video needs to be taken by someone else. Like they're always like, well, no one's home to take video or I don't have anyone else to film me. And I'm like, I just lean my camera against a coffee mug. Like there's nothing right. fancy about it. Right. So I, I wish people would post more videos so I could review their stuff, but it seems like I have to, I might have to help encourage them to do that more, but that's what it looks like for us. It's not, you know, join in the zoom and stuff like that. So it's just, you don't even, I don't even need to like meet you if you don't want to, although I would love to <laughs> meet people and introduce your cat and stuff. But if you don't, you can just watch the videos and try it on your own. That is so cool. That sounds like, okay, so when you start a new job in a corporation that has online training, you log in at your leisure. Maybe they give you like three months to complete this onboarding process. You log in, yeah. you watch your video. Maybe you ask, you answer questions, a quiz or something. Mm -hmm. In your case, is it a Facebook group where you discuss the, you troubleshoot things? I know. So we're on like a platform called Mighty Networks and oh, cool. it's really good. Yeah. So people can, there's a chat feature. So people can like, if you don't even want anyone to know you're there, but you want to chat with me, there's that you can even put your video in the chat feature, but people tend to like introducing themselves and showing pictures of their cats, which is great. And <laughs> um, so far I haven't had any problem with people posting comments. Like people will ask a lot of questions. So that's good. It's just the video. I really like seeing it. And like, I you know, when people say, well, my cat's doing this, how do I stop it? Or, you know, I want to not actually, that's not a good example, because I actually don't want to see their cat doing something bad. <laughs> but more about a training thing, if they say, you know, I'm trying to teach my cat to fetch, and it's not working, I would love to see what step is the training breaking down, you know, show me what you show me step two, show me trying step three, and then I can say, okay, this is what's going on. That's exactly what my next question is. My final question of the game is my friend who's a professional pet sitter, Tiffany um, Hammer Manson. She actually commented saying my only concern, because I asked my audience about these concerns they might have, is that I'd be doing it wrong and nobody would tell me. So then I wouldn't see the progress I wanted to see. But you're saying all she'd have to do is send 
a video and you could be like, actually, Tiffany, you're late on the click or whatever it is yeah, that, yeah. that's happening. That's delaying the learning. Yeah. Or you miss the step or show me step three again, or, you know, we need to work on this a little bit more, but yeah, it's, it's actually really good because like in a class, you can listen to the instructor and you, you see what they did, but like two seconds later, you might be like, I don't know if I really remember what her hand signal looked like or something on a video, you can pause it and you can literally see like, this is my hand signal for sit. This is what it looks like. And you can slow it down and then you can try it. You could videotape yourself, see what you look like. So it, it offers a lot of good like opportunities to improve precision because you can see exactly what people are doing and watch it over and over again. Yes. And it's individual. So it's not like I'm an instructor yeah. seeing 20 people with their cat or with their dog. And I only catch how this person didn't quite execute like I asked, but I missed yeah. all these other people doing it. Not to say exactly wrong, but like missing the cue or whatever it was. And I was a fitness instructor for a long time. I taught Zumba and I will tell you that monkey see monkey do does not work. I would do something and I would see a <laughs> class full of people doing completely different things. So monkey see monkey do does not always work. It does take time and training and practice. So and somebody to like kind of go around and be like, actually that's not where we jump or that's not where we yeah. click. I will say like, personally, like I'm a big online learner. Like I take a ton of stuff online. I, I just, to improve my skills, I always do when I send video, like I'm a huge fan of online learning. And also, you know, you probably know, you know, if you have a busy schedule, you want to just be able to do it when you can have time to do it. You're not going to want to log in. I never watch a webinar at the time that it's posted. Never. I don't know why it, it's like, it, they, yeah. I don't know if they're not designed for where <laughs> when people are available or if it's just, we don't have the time. I don't know. But yeah, if it doesn't have a playback, I don't even register. Cause I'm like, if I'm yeah, not going to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And honestly, yeah. Like online learning is amazing. I mean, right now YouTube is the second largest search engine on the internet. Right. And why is it because people want to learn how to do things? DIY has never been like bigger because people can learn how to do things themselves from the comfort of their home without having to, you know, hire a professional to come here. Like you said, I'm sure it's much more affordable to do an online training like this and have a professional come into your home where you're the only oh, person. Yeah. Your yeah. course is for multiple people. So you can share the cost of creation. Exactly rather than your time. Walking and also what I house. always tell people too, like, I think people don't realize this that much, but when you're trying to build a resource to help people, it is so good to have other people's questions. So many students will say this after to me, they're like, I was reading all the other questions and I saw my answer. And I'm so, you know, like they, everyone benefits so much more when you share all your questions and your videos. It's like, it just, it's, it turns out to be such a great resource. So I, I, I try to encourage people not to reach out to me privately on email and be like, okay, how do I fix this? I'm like, join the class and you know, you'll see like your question even in there yes. probably. <laughs> yeah. And if it's three in the morning and you just want to know the answer, maybe you can search it and find it exactly. instead of waiting for the next morning, it, you know, <laughs> instant gratification. Yes, exactly. So you offer a cat school membership. What does that entail exactly? Uh, so yeah, so we have like a monthly membership and um, it's $25 a month and people can come in and have access to all our courses and my support. So like I was saying, they can leave a comment and they can post a video and basically it's got a lot of content in it. And I'm always, you know, trying to figure out how to help people get through all the content because, you know, you don't want your program just to have tons of information. So, but there's a lot to learn. Like we've got tricks practical behaviors, nails, teeth brushing, harness training, leash walking. And I try to do monthly challenges sometimes, backpack training. So yeah, like once you backpack. open the door, <laughs> once you open the door to cat training, it's just like, wow, I want to learn this. So I, I just did a poll and asked people what they wanted to learn. And they wanted to learn um, shoulder cat, which is to get your cat to ride on your shoulder. So like, there's just always so much to learn. And I'm even like, wow, we got to, we have so much to do in here. <laughs> like it's That's amazing. So what are your credentials? Obviously you have a master's in animal behavior. So why cats? Like you, I guess with that master's, you could have done anything. 
Well, yeah. So it's in, um, so with the masters, I got my animal behaviors designation. So that through the animal behavior society. So that means I can work with, you know, any species, but I ended up working with cats because of my own cat. Actually, he was really interested in doing training with when I was working with my dogs. And so I was training him. Um, I was like, he was, he basically, I was training my dogs every night and he showed up to do the states, the stuff and he wanted their treats and he, yeah. So I started to train him. And then I was like, I wonder if I can teach him all the things that I taught them. Like, how would that look like? And so I just started doing that. And I was posting my dog tricks on social media. And then I posted um, Jones's tricks. And I started getting so many messages from people. And I started looking around and I saw no one was really doing clicker training with cats. And I was, I, I don't know, I was just kind of like, wow, there's, there's something here because cats really love this. He passed away March, but a very, like, he was pretty aggressive. And so I was training this dog and at the same, like, I was basically getting some information that I really shouldn't be taking him out in the public because of his level of aggression. So I was having to enrich his life in, indoors. And that's really how I started to, to get into clicker training. And so like to take that and apply it to cats who live in this indoor environment and don't really get that much enrichment, it actually wasn't really a big leap for me because I had been trying to tire out this aggressive dog, you know, in downtown Toronto, there's so many triggers and I had oh really limited time to take them outside. Right. And so I was like, okay, well, how do I tire this dog out? And then it was like, wow, you know, if 15 minutes really is so much enrichment for this dog, how can I not you know, do the same thing with my cat who is showing up for training, wants to do stuff. So it was just like, you know, but then taking it into a business was obviously a whole other level, you know? Right, right. So do you think that online pet training is like the next wave? Like it's what's coming? I think the pandemic certainly pushed it along, but do you think it has legs long term? I mean, for dogs, I can understand why people would want to go to a class and see their dog play with other dogs. So I do see, I see it as both though. Like, I mean, personally, as a They're dog owner, I would definitely do, yeah, I would do the in class because I would want to see, you know, my puppy playing with another dog and I would think that it's fun and you meet people. So I would definitely do that. But for anything, you know, in like any tricks and stuff, I'd probably would do it at home. I think like if I wanted to do a trick class, I don't see why I would go to an in class for tricks. Like I'd probably just, right. you know, stay at you home. You want and... their full attention for tricks, right? Like otherwise it's just going to well, take longer. Well, if I was going to a class, I'd be in my own little zone anyway, and I'd have to travel there and there's no right. interaction with dogs. Yes. So I, I just don't see why I would, I would go. But for a puppy, yes, I probably would just because I think it's fun to watch them play and have their puppy play time and tire right. them socialization. Out and mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I think they're complimentary. And I think what's really awesome is I've interviewed many guests that offer very specialized courses online and they might you know, Michael uh, Shikashio, he specializes in aggressive dogs. So he has an online course that he designed for professionals working with dogs, but then pet parents started asking to join and they have a great experience there. I also interviewed Malena Demartini, who does separation, separation anxiety for dogs. And she's wonderful, but she's in California. You know, Michael is in Connecticut. So like I might want to work with Michael or Melina, but they exactly. are not local to me. So if I, somebody wants to work with you because they've developed a trust with you over social media, they like your style, they like what you teach. This is such a great opportunity to go straight to the source of your inspiration, right? Because we're all getting inspired yeah. on social media to kind of push our pet parenting a little further. Absolutely. I agree. It's a great opportunity to work with professionals and yeah. I do that all the time. I sign up yeah. for everything. <laughs> yeah, because you resonate with the message, right? You resonate with the person, you resonate with their message, with their style. I love that so much. And what's really interesting to me about you is that here you are, this academic, behaviorist, business owner, obviously animal lover, and you're also kind of an inventor. You designed your own cat harness. Tell me about that. Uh, well, the first thing I want to say is that the cat harness style isn't anything that unique. Like it's a vest style harness and, you know, it's, it's been the, around. When it comes to this equipment, <laughs> it's like the, it's the little things that make a difference, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, the reason I went ahead with it is because I actually like doing kits 
So I combine stuff together. So the harness right now I sell with a, a 10 foot leash because people don't typically sell longer leashes for cats, which I'm a huge fan of. Like I've always like, as a dog walker, I always use long lines, 10, 15. So I sell a 10 foot leash. That was part of the reason as I wanted to be able to bundle it. And then with the kit that I have right now with the training kit, I sell a book. And then, so I'm doing the same thing with the harness as, and the book's um, almost, almost finished, but it'll come. So the person who buys our leash walking kit will get a book, a harness and a leash. So it, it's like, I just don't want people getting the harness without the information. Right. I've done so much research and so much of my own practical stuff on leash walking cats. And, you know, like I could not sell a product and then read a review that says my cat slipped out. And, right. you know, like it's just it's just terrifying to, to imagine. So I'm trying to do everything I can to make sure that when I get outside, they have a tracking device on. They have everything they need to be safe. They're not just taking their cat out onto a busy street. So I'm like really trying. So that's that was the motivation for me because these harnesses, some harnesses do exist, like the style, the same style, similar style to what I have. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I'm also a big advocate for a certain color because I want people to be able to spot cats. So, Ooh. you know, I don't want them wearing black when they can be wearing a bright color like ours is yes. turquoise. And the leash too is from my experiences, being able to see the leash on the ground. If your cat goes behind a bush is also helpful. So like, you know, I put a lot of thought, you've thought about, yeah, you've thought about everything. I thought I about the safety yeah. because it's, you know, it's, it's a hard one. And, you know, I want to tell people to do it. I want to be an advocate for leash walking, but only, only if their cat is going to be safe. I don't want to be saying, take your cat outside and then they have an incident. I mean, for sure. It's the, it's, it's the same thing as dog walking. Like, yes, your dog, say, desperately you know, needs, yeah, yeah. Dogs desperately need walks, but I'd rather you keep your dog inside until you get the right equipment because your that dog walk. If he ends up under a car tire, like it's not going to yeah. help him in any way, obviously. So no, um, there's terrifying. a saying, yeah, there's a saying fool with a tool, still a fool, right? You need to have yeah. the tool and know how to use it. So I love that you're yeah. to the book. You also have another few kits. What other kit do you have? Yeah. So the other kit I have is a clicker training kit. So it comes with a clicker and a target stick and a book that introduced a little, I don't want to call it a book. It's a little like guide right. <laughs> of getting started. And then the guide has uh, links to YouTube videos. So it's like a little um, guidebook and tools and it gets people started on their clicker training journey. That is awesome. And obviously to purchase those, they just go on your website, they purchase those kits individually. And then if they get inspired, they can join your course after that, your membership after that. So yeah, there's, you know, whatever journey people want to, wherever they want to start, if you want to just get the kit and you have the tools, you have access to the YouTube videos to start uh, watching. The kit is also on Amazon. So if people want to buy it there, they're welcome to buy it there. And I think in only in international, we don't sell it internationally. So that's an option too on Amazon. And then if they need more help and they want to join the membership or have more of a roadmap, then they can come into the class. They want my support. That's usually if, if they get stuck anywhere, then they want to join the class so they can make sure, you know, they get past that initial, ch the initial challenges. All right. Awesome. So where can my audience learn more about your classes and your membership? So catschool.co is our website and the YouTube channel is is great. There's lots of videos there and that's youtube.com and then forward slash cat school. So, or if you just go to YouTube and you search cat school, obviously we'll show up, but so cat school.co is our website and there's links everywhere. And I'm pretty sure if you just go cat school, we'll show up on Google as well. I would hope yes. so. I'm, I think we and do. <laughs> you are for sure on Instagram. I've seen you there. You're on yes. Facebook, correct? Yeah. Facebook, not as much. So basically uh, how our social media works is I do a lot of work on YouTube. So you'll find a lot of videos there. And then I try to encourage people to share their training with me on Instagram so I can show it off to other people. And then if I remember, I push it to Facebook, but I actually don't go on Facebook anymore. So you know, what's funny is Facebook when you're sharing links to YouTube, they shut it down anyway. They don't share it. They like really, yeah, limit. Yeah. they want to keep everybody on the platform. So I don't blame you for not spending a lot of time on Facebook. I'm a little discouraged myself on Facebook. Yeah. I mean, for me, I know it's like what you said, people are looking for learning stuff on YouTube. 
So if you're looking to help your cat, YouTube is the best place for me because people are looking for those tutorials. So I've had a lot of, you know, we have about close to 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. So lots of people are looking for that is That is not easy to do. So congratulations. That is a huge channel. I I'm, I'm thrilled for all the, the people you're reaching because that just means more happy cats. So yeah, so that's where a lot of my time goes, because I know people want the information. And they also take a lot of time to make those videos. (laughs) Absolutely, for sure. Well, I just want to propose a toast to you for being so awesome and for helping all those cats and for coming up with this cat school, which I wish you nothing but success with. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. I also want to propose a toast to our executive producer, Mark Winter, and to our audience on Pet Life Radio and on YouTube. Thank you for spending your time with us. Make sure you train your cat. And uh, here's to a life covered in pet hair because there's no better way to live. Cheers. To learn more about covered in pet hair, please visit coveredinpethair.com or petliferadio.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on petliferadio.com.